Good morning, Long Air Band. Time to wake up. <laughs> now let's talk a little bit about noise abatement, is what we call it. Uh, we fly here from early in the morning. And the thing with it is that I'm going to try and induce it. If you hear now, you can hear the blades slapping. Now that's around 40 to 60 knots, I'm passing through 30 now. Now what you can do is lower the power, okay, go down faster. Then you re reduce the noise signature significantly and you fly more neighborly. Now of course you're going to move in and out of areas in which you won't be able to do that because either you need the power or you can't go as fast or you can't go as slow or you know whatever. But if you think about it, there are some things that you can do to reduce the noise. Because I understand, like you've seen the videos, the ones that I made already, the, the people here, they live like right where the action is going on. And they're, <laughs> I come to learn that their bedrooms, they are uh, facing upwards uh, to Zuckerdoppen. And then you and I can like pretty much understand that that's gonna wake them up in the morning for the ones that uh, weren't planning on uh, waking up at seven. Like that's what we, when we begin. Uh, so whatever you can do to reduce the noise impact and the noise pollution, I guess you could call it, um, you should probably try and do that. And like, uh, the helicopter associations and so on and so forth they and even the manufacturers they make noise abatement procedures which you talk about these things and um, and so you should do what you can to reduce the noise impact fly neighbors Good morning. Back at it here in Long Airbin. Um, before uh, we start the uh, flights uh, every day, we actually do the checks on the helicopter um, after the last flight. That's what we call it. And uh, after last flight check, and that's when we go over the things that um, I mean, you got to check. Uh, there's many things. There's just too much to mention here now. But in general. <laughs> It'll be like oil levels, do some mag plugs, do some general condition and I use uh, always carry a rag so that I can wipe off any oil um, I carry a flashlight, super handy um, to do your proper inspections. I think it's necessary to, to find what you're looking for and sometimes you don't even know what you're looking for until you see it. There could be a little crack or there could be something that is just out of place and makes it way easier. And then the rag, like I said, was just a wipe clean and just make everything look a lot better. Um, this is how it looks like inside the gearbox compartment. This is the main gearbox. This is a hydraulic pump. This is the engine oil. This is the hydraulics oil. This is the servos. There's three of them. Um, and just a little overview. Inside here is the engine. It's a turbine. Big exhaust coming out here. Um, and looking around, tail rotor. So it looks like two bladed tail rotor and a three bladed main rotor. And uh, Checking the tail boom and I mean you, you just look through all kinds of things uh, looking for whatever is wrong. Um, on the other side is the, is the gearbox from the other side and uh, here are the servos and the servo rods as I was mentioning. This is the suspension bars to su support uh, the gearbox. This is what we call the dog bone. Um, 
so there's just so many things to look at and and you just never know what it is um, but you gotta look and see and there could be something like something simple like you had a bird strike uh, something other like debris coming flying up and hitting the main rotor so many things can happen um, so that's that just a little introduction all right <clears throat> so the engine compartment I'm gonna open it a little bit extra um, just to kind of make it a little bit easier to see and support it up there and this is how it looks like this is the engine this is what delivers the power this part here is the engine um, this is the transmission part supplying power uh, forwards to the main rotor and then aft to the tail rotor um, air comes in at the top goes in gets compressed add some fuel make some heat and exhaust comes out the back okay so I'll show you this is one of the rotor blades uh, this is how they look like they're very flexible and it sounds like you're kind of knocking on a boat they are part composite material some glass reinforced fiber or something and then there is some steel to them too to take a little more uh, wear and it all right uh, like i said thanks for watching guys if you like these videos consider su subscribing uh, to encourage me to make more i like what i do best job i ever had and uh, and the encouragement really helps if you wonder about anything please leave a comment and uh, i'm gonna put this thing down now we're gonna get the film crew hope they make an awesome video of uh, what it is that we're doing And uh, that's it for now. Auf Wiedersehen.